Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of Action Awareness, I want to talk about Lightning Rescue of the Mega Troopers. Before a base scores, you can play Lightning Rescue, a special action, to play another action as a special action. This effectively converts any action that can be legally played into a Phase 3 special, which is amazing and makes it one of the best actions in the game. This is the type of video that is obviously going to be example based and there are too many combos to name, but I'm willing to share a few of my favorite combos with the card. But there are two important aspects to note first. The first is that Lightning Rescue triggers the Black Trooper not once, but twice, because the action played is explicitly played as a special action. This is very useful for multi-base strategies where Black Trooper is camped on another base, absorbing power from the many specials that the Mega Troopers are capable of playing. The second consideration is that Lightning Rescue functions quite similar to Mole, but it is much better in my opinion. Mole has the advantage in that it gets to fire first, which may matter in situations like and stay down or when you want to destroy a minion before its ability resolves. But the problem is that Mole is predictable and requires a presence on the base. It can be destroyed or dealt with in any number of ways. But with Lightning Rescue, you aren't always certain that a player has it in their hand, which can force a player to overpay. Additionally, the abilities of other Mega Trooper cards provide unique opportunities that the spies could not replicate, and this creates some very powerful combinations. As I said before, there are simply too many combos to name, but I wanted to give a representative sample of them. These aren't necessarily my top six, but they are diverse in what they do, and many of them take advantage of the fact that you can play any action, not one necessarily tied to the currently scoring base. The first is Favor of Hermes, which simply lets you play two other actions. Now, you have a window of immediate extra plays that will allow you to play multiple cards that will be very difficult to interrupt because they are played outside the normal cards phase. And while there are other similar cards, the Mythic Greeks have the best assortment of actions for this type of play, as well as the bonuses they receive for playing each action. Simply by playing Favor of Hermes, you've generated two power for the Black Ranger and Odysseus and Heracles, while allowing the latter two to continue to grow as you essentially take a full turn on another player's turn while bases are scoring. You can play an extra minion, or you can add extra power. You can take advantage of the Greek cards that grant extra actions further. You can reduce the power of a different base by 5, which, when combined with all the power you are adding to your minions, can net you multiple bases. Worst case scenario, you can play two more Argonauts anywhere, which also trigger Black Ranger because they are special abilities. It's too bad Spartan doesn't gain a counter when it's not your turn, otherwise this would be even more advantageous. The second example is a variant of the first, but with an important distinction, and that's Ghostly Arrival. Specifically, both versions. With the Ghosts, the key distinction is that you do not draw cards on other players' turns, allowing you a rare chance to thin your hand multiple times. One of the problems with Ghosts is that Phase 4 drawing is not your friend, as it ultimately undoes some of your progress. But a Ghostly Arrival on someone else's Phase 3 allows you to play Spectre from the discard pile, break a base, and then replay Spectre again easily on your turn if you manage your cards appropriately. If you're worried about not having any cards in your turn, Power Pose can net you one extra card to be used next turn or as a throwaway to Cream Puff Man. But the All-Star Ghostly Arrival is perhaps more interesting because the All-Stars can play an insane amount of actions on their turn. Imagine the combination of Non-Infinite Loop and It's Astounding when mixed in with Lightning Rescue, in addition to the versatility of other All-Star actions. If you could somehow end with a terminal square deal, you'd have your hand fully regenerated for you to take a meaningful turn again on your next turn. Or, if you can net an extra action play, you could keep playing cards after square deal and have full control over phase 3 on someone else's turn. Both of these combos require a lot of cards, but they have a crucial last minute impact. Let's look at an easier example, where you can get an easy 4 or 5 points, 
6 if you are really lucky. Since the extra action is a generic action, one of the best things you can do if you are the immediate next player is to play Overgrowth on an empty base with a high first player reward. There are very few cards that will let you add a minion at the last moment, and if your opponents do not have any, then you can break a base by yourself, completely unexpectedly, while not giving your opponents a chance to react, all with a single minion. Just play your lowest powered minion on the base and break it by yourself. This requires no setup at all other than having the cards in your hand, and it doesn't take a lot of cards, and the killer plant card draw makes that easy. One of the most powerful combos in the game is to create the super powerful first mate who can break infinite bases. There aren't a lot of combos that thwart this, but Lightning Rescue can in the most glorious way possible. Lightning Rescue can play Control Minion, in which case that ultra powerful minion is now yours while you choose whether or not to wreck infinite bases. If it ever becomes mathematically impractical to keep it alive, you, as the controller, can just choose not to activate its special and let it go to the discard pile. You can steal one base, and potentially every other base, and there isn't much that an opponent can do to stop it other than diversify the power across several first mates, or have a way to avoid losing control. The giant ants can stop this on one base, but once the first mate moves off, you can simply steal him on the second one. My last two examples involve the same faction, and are extremely elegant because of their simplicity. One of my absolute favorite cards, perhaps my favorite minion, is the Shinobi because it's one of the few cards that can counter solo bases. But the Mega Troopers have their own version in Green Trooper, which is perfect when combined with the last minute crop circles. You can simply stay off a base entirely, let a player or players use all their cards to break it, then crop circles them all at the last minute and play your Green Trooper in its place as perhaps the only minion there. If done on another player's turn, they will likely discard many of those cards just returned, which effectively destroys many of them. Alternatively, you can use your invaders as your minions for presence, and let them be returned as well for more invader farming. While everyone else is focused on one base, you can use your best power cards to win another. But Crop Circles does give a player back their cards. Why do that? Also, it can be blocked by cards that cannot be returned or affected. If you know me, you know where this is going. So what is the most flexible card and hardest to prevent? My absolute favorite pairing, because there is almost always a use case, is terraforming. Some viewers have complained that the situation never presents itself, but in this case, you allow the situation to present itself. You stay off the base entirely, then terraform it into a ninja base and use that extra minion play to get your only presence on the base. Hopefully Winter Squash is in your deck, otherwise you can get at least a regular ninja base. In a two player game, you are guaranteeing yourself at least three points while greatly negating the VP of the winner. Even transforming into a 5-4-3 base is worthwhile because you are getting four points for barely any work. In a two player game, this gets you an easy second place and forces a player to use a ton of their best cards. All of these combos are difficult to prevent, but not impossible. As you know, I want counterception, where my counters have counter counters, and my counter counters have counters, and Eliza makes lightning rescue useless. As a card played outside the play cards phase, by definition, it is an extra card, and therefore, you cannot play the action it grants. Just be aware of this when you play Mega Troopers. In general, Lightning Rescue is absolutely a card you can build a strategy around. When I choose Mega Troopers, I want to know in advance what my Lightning Rescue card will be and plan accordingly. I don't think that the right card at the right time mentality works. Define your strategy and work towards it. Lightning Rescue doesn't have to save a base because it can be used to steal a base, even one not currently breaking. I'm sure you have a favorite combination with this card. Let me know about it in the comments. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.